Welcome to Cheap Controls. We make videos on things that we struggled with, hoping to help you so you don't. Consider subscribing and hitting that bell. In this video I'm going to go over the Arduino Pulse Width Modulation. I'm going to do it just a little bit different. We're not going to use any library. We're going to do this completely from scratch. But I'm going to use a standard output. I'm not even going to use the Pulse Width Modulated Output. We're just going to create everything just through logic. I'm going to start by going over this a little bit on a whiteboard. So the server motor I'm working with is 50 hertz or 1 over 50 is equal to 0 0.02 or 20 milliseconds. So we're going to want a timer that's going to operate every 20 milliseconds. I'm going to draw that on a line now. So if we have two 20 millisecond, if we have two 20 millisecond time limits or time spaces here, we're going to want to have a pulse that goes up and down like this. And that's what's going to tell the servo motor the length of this pulse is going to tell it how far to turn. And the servo motor I have is 180 degrees and at this point it's 1500 microseconds or 1.5 milliseconds but we're going to be talking in microseconds because 20 milliseconds from here to here is the same as 20,000 microseconds and then the pulse starts or a zero is 1000 and 180 is supposed to be 2000 so our pulse is only going to be the first two milliseconds of the 20 milliseconds and we're going to do it in microseconds. So the pulse would be from let's say here to here. So it's at the very beginning of our 20 millisecond window. And so we're going to have two timers and timer one timer one is going to be this time right here. 20 milliseconds. And timer 2 is going to be the pulse time. So every time we start our 20 milliseconds, we're going to turn it on. And then timer 2 is going to tell us when we're going to turn it off. And then timer 2 is going to be shorter than 20 milliseconds, so it's going to keep turning it off as this pulse goes on. And then once we get to here, we turn it back on, and then timer 2 is going to turn it off. And it can keep turning it off. That's okay. As long as it doesn't turn it on again in the middle of this window. Now we're going to switch over to the Arduino, and we'll do it all in code. So to begin with, I just have an empty Arduino file. I am going to use pin 12 and I put this in here just so I didn't mess up and pick the wrong pin. It is not a pulse width modulated pin and I'm using a nano so you can check that out. But even if it was a pulse width modulated pin we're not going to use that functionality because you do an analog write to it to take advantage of the pulse width modulated um, ability of the pin and we're not going to do that in this particular video. We're going to have to have two timers. One for the 20 milliseconds itself and then another one for the length of the pulse. We're going to add those first. I guess I don't mean added originally, I'm just putting in a couple variables so that we can use these variables to help us with it. And this one's going to be the server delay, which is just going to be a counter, and initially we'll set it equal to the current millisecond count, and then the, the length of that delay, which is 20 milliseconds. And it's just 20, we could be calling microseconds or milliseconds, but in this case we'll be doing milliseconds. And then for the second asynchronous delay, we're going to call it the pulse delay because it's the, the length of that pulse. And we're initially going to set the, the delay itself equal to zero. And we're going to end up using microseconds for that, but we'll get to that later. And then the pulse length is going to be 1500 microseconds or 1 1.5 milliseconds. 
Now we're going to set it to 1500 because I wanted to set the servo at the 90 degree position. According to the documentation, 1000 should be 0 and 2000 should be 180. Now you'll find out that that isn't exactly true um, as we work through this, but, but we'll work through it and we'll adjust the servo because you'll be able to get real feedback on it and then adjust based upon that. Now for the main 20 millisecond delay cycle, we want that to continually run and we want that to be pretty set. So we're going to, in our setup, we're going to configure that to be equal to the current millisecond. So when we start the loop, we won't hit it for the first 20 milliseconds and it'll start nice and clean. Now the, the microsecond, the pulse length, that's just going to be turning the output off every 1.5 milliseconds and that'll, that actually won't stay in sync with the 20 millisecond delay. So I'm not really too worried about setting that here. We're going to set that every time that this delay triggers. So in the main loop, we're going to take that milliseconds, which is a built-in function just to give the current milliseconds that the nano is at, and if it is greater than the servo delay plus the servo delay length, which is this, at, at first it's zero, and then plus 20 milliseconds. So every 20 milliseconds, it's going to execute this loop right here. And so every 20 milliseconds, we're going to set the servo delay. We're going to advance it another 20 milliseconds so it won't happen again. And then we're going to turn that output, that digital output 12, we're going to set it high. And then this is where we need to trigger that pulse delay and get it synced up. So we're going to set that equal to microseconds right here. And so this way, when the servo delay turns that output high, we set this essentially to zero as far as our timer is concerned. And then when this pulse delay hits the length, this 1.5 milliseconds or 1500 microseconds, that's when we're going to have this loop turn it off. So at the beginning of that 20 millisecond cycle, which is initiated here, we're going to turn it on, and then we'll turn it off after that delay length. And this is the loop that will that, that will happen in. Now this loop is going to run more often than this loop up here, but since it's just going to continually turn the output low, once it's turned to low, it shouldn't have any effect. So now I'm going to upload this, but I'm going to have the camera on the servo so you see it, it, it will kick in as soon as the upload is done. Oh, and I have an error. Okay, editor, I guess you win this one. Let's try it again. And you saw it move real quick. I'm going to go ahead and, and upload it again. And during the upload phase, since there's no voltage on it or the triggering hasn't happened, you can actually adjust this. Right now, it would be too hard to adjust. It's locked into space or locked into its position. So I'm going to upload it again one more time. And there, that gave you a little better look at it at how it adjusts to that position. And so this is the, the supposedly the 90 degree position. And I put a little black mark on the one end so we can see it move. I could loosen that screw and have it pointed straight up, but it should be good enough for what we're doing. And what we'll do now is we're going to change this to 1000. And that should change it to the zero position now when I upload it. And you can see that it, it went from here down to here. So that wasn't 90 degrees. Now we're going to change it to 2,000 and see if it spins all the way up to here. But I imagine it's only going to go up to about here. So you just change this pulse length up here, hit upload again. And you can see that's what happened. So we need to adjust our range a little bit. It must not be exactly 1,000 to 2,000, or the pulse length isn't quite appearing the way you might think it is. I'm going to show an oscilloscope I have on it right now so you can see the different waveforms. 
And so hopefully that's clear, but you can see the pulses as they happen. I'm going to change this to 5,000 right now, which should make that a quarter of the display. It won't, uh, won't work with this particular servo motor, but you'll get the idea that we're going to expand this pulse width. So if I change this to 5, so now I'm sending a 5,000. Or why don't I go ahead and make it 10, so it should be about half of the, the display. And there you can see that it's about half up and about half down. And so that's what we're doing. We're just adjusting this length of this pulse. And the pulse has to be, the at least the on time, has to be 20 milliseconds apart. Now I have done this and I've messed up and put the wrong, not exactly been at 50 hertz, and it has worked. So I find that kind of interesting too. But we try to keep it to within the specs that the... Uh, device wants. We'll go back to the servo itself. The thing that I find interesting about the servo is I sent 10,000 to it and it just doesn't have any reaction. If the pulse width is out of range you get nothing from the servo. So you can just adjust. You could start you can start changing this pulse length to about anything you want in order to test. So if we know that 1,000 to 2,000 is too small you could set it to like 2500. And if you don't get any reaction at all, then you know that that was too high. But we'll go ahead and send this now. And 2500 gave us a pretty good um, reaction to it. So we know that 2500 works. So the range isn't quite what the spec said. And I did some, some working on this before, and it's somewhere like 2600 to 1300 or something like that is the actual um, span of this servo motor. And now we're going to add in this rotary enco encoder so we can move the servo with the rotary encoder. We're going to start by adding some variables up here in the top section. So for the rotary encoder, we have two pins. We have A and we have B. And we need to keep track of A, both the current reading and a past reading. So I've got three variables to help with that. I'm going to use pins 10 and 11 to connect the rotary encoder up. A and B will be on 10 and 11. So this is the code that I pasted in for the uh, encoder, the rotary encoder. We're going to take the variables that we used at the top, and we're just going to do some comparison. We're going to read in A, or digital pin 10, and store it in A present. And then we're going to read in pin 11 and store it in B. And if A present isn't equal to A past, in other words, we've turned the rotor, we want to do something in here. And if once we've turned the rotor, if A is equal to B, then we know we're going clockwise. And if A isn't equal to B, then we know we're going counterclockwise. If we're going clockwise, we're going to subtract 10 from the pulse length, that 1500. But it has to be greater than 350. In other words, we're going to turn it so far, and if it's go beyond 350, then we don't want to increase it anymore, or we don't want to turn it anymore. And the same thing on the counterclockwise. If we go above 200, 2600, we don't want to add any more to it. In other words, we've, we've maxed out the servo. I'm going to go ahead and run this now. So now I have the rotary encoder, and you'll notice as I turn it, it moves which is what we expect should happen. But the reason that I brought this rotary coder in is because in the delay, now that we have this, everything has to flow. We can't have any delay statements. Like in the code itself, you'll notice that there's no delay in here. We do this every 20 milliseconds, but we don't do it using the delay statement. If I add a delay in here, which is just a 500 millisecond delay. It's half a second delay in the middle of this. It will all break. See, I'm adjusting it. I'm not getting any turn. And that's because the 500 millisecond delay that we have in here is interrupting this up here. So it's not getting that 20 milliseconds because when it hits this delay, it just stops. So this is continually looping and it, it, so it extends this milliseconds by 
500 milliseconds. So once this delay is done, it'll execute this immediately, and it'll execute this immediately. And that's not what you want. It won't work. So although it's possible to make this um, work on a pin without the pulse width modulated, without a library, or without using a pin, it's not always going to work. So this is more of just kind of a fun video to show you how pulse width modulation works and how you can make it work. And if you don't have any delays and you want to do it, that's fine. But there's also nothing wrong with using the built-in ones, unless you need some weird frequency or something that isn't built into the pulse width modulation, or you don't want to use the libraries that come with it. But just for a quick review, we needed two separate timers. We needed one set to 20 milliseconds. And then we needed a second one set to some other variable. In this case, we set it to 2500, but you can start at whatever you want. And then one timer runs the length of the frequency the component needs, and then the other timer gives you your pulse. And that's what these two timers do down here. And then you can adjust that pulse length, but you have to do it without using a delay. You have to do it in some other way. A lot of times I use an action display, and you could use that, because you could send that value to it, and when it receives it, it alters it. And it would work just fine. Well, that's about it for this video. If you like what you saw, consider giving me a thumbs up, and also consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching.